All right, this one from Brendan. This is great content, and I appreciate it. Are you familiar with Oppie's, Graham Oppie's, critique of the first way? If so, what do you think he is missing? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I wrote an article um, on existential inertia and Aquinas' way to God. Uh, and I wrote an article on Aquinas' first way, uh, the argument from motion, uh, and uh, reconsidering uh, the Aquinas' first way. Because Oppie, as I... Um, as I've read Oppe, Oppe is not attacking Aquinas' first way um, in his recent critique. He's attacking Fieser's argument from motion. So he, he doesn't have the first way in mind. He has Fieser in mind there, uh, which is one thing uh, to bear in mind. Uh, but uh, I dealt with um, the, the, the first way in the article in the first way. Again, it's coming out in the Collected Articles book. And um, I engage with both Oppe and Joseph Schmidt, who's followed up um, with Oppe on this issue of existential inertia. And I, I basically point out, um, and it's a common theme in my defense of Aquinas' um, arguments for God, that um, we do not enter these arguments uh, with a mindset of metaphysical neutrality. So we're not neutral with regard to our metaphysical commitments. We enter these arguments engaging with the metaphysics, you know, that Thomas uses to buttress the arguments. The, the metaphysics is the buttress, it's the scaffold on which the arguments stand. Now, if Oppie has a problem, or if anybody has a problem with Aquinas' arguments for God, it's very unlikely to be the arguments themselves. It's likely to be the metaphysical buttressing of the premises of the arguments. And that's what Oppie attacks when he attacks the argument for motion which Fieser presents. Because one, uh, I mean, the principle behind Thomas's thinking is that um, things which are paralleled um, possess their actuality because they participate in some per se source for that actuality. That means at any point in which they have actuality, that actuality is being caused in them because they participate in that actuality. So at any point we enjoy illumination, it's because illumination is being caused in us, uh, say by the sun. Obby's critique is that, well, look, that's not how existence works. The way existence works is that things have existence and they just go on having existence unless some cause comes along to stop them having existence. In other words, we don't invoke a cause for a thing having existence at any point that it has. You know, it's not a participated source of existence. Rather, we evoke a cause whenever a thing ceases to have existence. So something's granted existence, it possesses existence, and then it only ceases to exist when something knocks it out of existence. Now, the problem with that as an attack on Aquinas is that it fundamentally diverges from the metaphysical buttressing um, of Aquinas's first way. The metaphysical buttressing of Aquinas' first way is that potency is actualized. Actuality is not potentialized. Actuality doesn't subsist in the potency. The potency is actualized by the source of actuality. So it's not the case that the actuality comes down and sits in the potency and just stays there until knocked out of the potency. It's that the potency is drawn into actuality by the source of actuality. So this idea of existential inertia just doesn't make sense on Aquinas' metaphysics. Now, Oppie is free to reject that metaphysics, but then he has to do the hard work of being a metaphysician and engaging with that. And um, Oppie just doesn't do that. And that that's not Oppie's uh, modus operandi in philosophy because he doesn't think that metaphysical reasoning and argumentation is the way to go in philosophy. Because for him, philosophical engagement is one of comparing two positions and asking whose grass is greener, whose does more with less. It's just worldview comparison. It's not the traditional task of philosophy, of forming arguments, making deductions, inferences, and coming to conclusions. It's really just comparing two things and asking which is better. Well, that is not at all what Thomas is doing. Thomas is putting forth the metaphysics, making deductions, inferences, and seeing where they go. Um, given Oppie's MO in philosophy, he is unable to evaluate Aquinas' metaphysics because he just doesn't do uh, that sort of metaphysical reasoning. Now, Oppie asks us to consider, you know, as an example of existential inertia, he says, take some color property. When we color a chair red, the ch chair doesn't remain red because it's continually dependent on a source of redness, say the one who dyes it. It remains red until somebody comes along and dyes it green. Well, 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 well. 
Anybody who has read Aquinas' Principles of Nature or Philosophy of Nature in general will tell you that the chair does remain red because it does depend on a continual source of redness, not the efficient cause of red, but on the form, the formal cause of red, i.e. that the chair is constituted in such a way that it looks red. That's the formal cause of the redness, the chair being formed in that way that it be red. The chair depends on that formal cause not the efficient cause which introduces the form, but certainly the formal cause. Not only that, existence is not like a color property. The reason why the color property remains or subsists or persists in the chair is because the chair subsists. The reason why existence remains in the thing is not because the thing persists, because the thing persists only because it has existence. So the persistence of existence is not because the thing will exist, but because there's some source of existence which grants existence to the thing and allows the thing to persist at any point at which it does persist. Okay, so existence plays a different causal role in the constitution of things than does color properties. And all of that is to say, when we go back to the first way, for Thomas, it's not actuality, which is potentialized, brought down into the potency and just subsists there in the potency like the color property in the chair. It's potency which is actualized like something depending, like something being illuminated by the light of the sun and depending on the light of the sun for its illumination for at any point that it's illuminated. So Abbey's um, objection, if it's an objection to Aquinas' first way, which it isn't, it's an objection to Fieser, but if it should be construed as an objection to Aquinas' first way, misses the mark entirely. Yeah, great response, Gavin. And not only that, but I will also say that Fieser himself has defended uh, mm. against Abbey's objections in print. He's got an article with religious studies Forget the yeah. title of it, but it was it was it was mm -hmm. quite good. So people, if it, it making the distinction that you made that there is a difference between Aquinas's first way, certainly as you mm -hmm. defended it, and Phaser's Aristotelian proof, mm -hmm. taking into consideration what Gavin said for Aquinas's first way, uh, but Phaser has his own response, which I thought was uh, very well done as well. If people want to just check that out in addition to that.